Hey, Moby Trades! I want to do a video analysis update on Apple, as well as Google, Tesla, Advanced Market Devices, and Micron, Taiwan Simis, and Amazon, XLV, the healthcare ETF, and IWM, Transio Corp, Disney, the airline ETF, Jets, Alibaba, Wayfair, and XPEV, Li Auto, Neo, and Solar ETF, Tan, Polar Power, Workhorse, PayPal, Roku, TWLO, Zoom, Fastly, Pounder, Bitcoin, and Cardano. So we have Apple forming a wave one and a wave two. Conservatively, it's within a wave three high right now that will end at the 161.8% extension. This wave three is subdivided into wave one of wave three, wave two of wave three, wave three of wave three, and wave four of wave three. So the length of wave three places the wave four low, lines up with 171, 172. Then in the most conservative view, we'd have a shallow wave four correction before wave five higher. All in all, waves one, two, three, four, and five say that Apple has more upside to about 201 for this wave one, two, three, four, wave five target. Now, this could be quite conservative, and there's a lot of evidence for that. Um, the first is kind of that the NASDAQ QQQ is above uh, this September high from 2020 that basically the entire stock market formed, and it's about 33% higher than this level. So if Apple were 33% higher than the September 2020 high, it would go all the way to 182 and the other reason that this is pretty conservative is that there is a rule in Elliott Wave Theory that says a Wave 5 must end with momentum divergence on the Relative Strength Index. So if we look at the weekly RSI right now, this, what we're calling Wave 3 high, was made at 73.68. So if we break above 73.68 on the weekly RSI, then this is not a Wave 5 in progress on the smaller degree. It's very likely a 1-2, 1-2 Elliott Wave Nest, and that's kind of coupled with a lot of evidence because we're at the 50% retracement for the end of this correction. All that would mean is that everything I just said about Apple was kind of too conservative. We might not get that pullback at 171. We might be extending much higher than that for this black wave three. Then we'd have a shallow wave four correction in a wave five higher. And then that wave five target would be much higher because the wave four uh, would end in a much higher level as well. So basically this could be a one, two, three, four, five, but I think more likely it's a one, two, one, two, LA wave nest. And then wave three, wave three is gonna take Apple past 172 so we'll know that this is a nest if one apple makes a new high on the weekly rsi above 73.68 and two if we go kind of you know substantially past 172 173 say 175 then this will pretty obviously be a one two one two la wave nest we're within wave three of wave three and apple could go a lot higher than 200 kind of in the first half of 2022 here's google i think google is a very beautiful chart it's an abc correction in a wave one and a wave two then it's a huge wave three cleanly subdivided into one two three four five waves it ended wave four and then it broke the wave three high i believe this is a wave five in progress right now the conservative wave five target is the length of wave one placed at the wave four low all in all it looks like google has more upside to 3323 and it's unlikely that the stock market will crash during that time i think this is also one where if you see google at 3323 that's a pretty clear one two three four five waves impulse I would be looking for a large degree wave one to end uh, and look for a buying opportunity for wave two in 2022. So Google looks good. Here is Tesla. Tesla's in that evidence category because we predicted a lot of these moves. Let's stick with the most conservative view right now, um, but we're starting to see kind of the writing on the wall that this is too conservative. So the most conservative view for Tesla is that this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a wave three and a wave four that ended at the 38.2% retracement. So we're then a wave five high right now. The length of wave three places the wave four low says the, the next kind of wave five target minimally is about 1368 to say 1400. Now, what happens if Tesla goes past 1400? Well, in Elliott wave theory, very rarely is wave five bigger than wave three. And what we're kind of seeing right now is that within this cycle from this low that we formed in March, we form a wave one and a wave two. This is a big wave three and very likely a wave four that ended at the 38.2% retracement. So if we took the length of wave one and we placed it to the wave four low, then Tesla's wave five would not make a new high above this wave three. I believe that wave five will be the length of wave three placed at the wave four low. And that means that Tesla quite, you know, potentially could go past 1368. It could go as high as the 1600s for this wave five target. Okay, so if Tesla goes to the 1600s, then that would be past the length of wave three placed at the wave four low. And that would confirm 
on the kind of larger degree that I've been too conservative. This is not a wave five in progress. It's a one, two, one, two, Elliott wave nest. That means 1368 is the minimum wave three target. We'd have a shallow wave four correction and a wave five higher. So I designed my post in July so that from 660, when Tesla reached 1368, it would be up a hundred percent for a hypothetical non-existent shareholder. Then half of the shares could be sold. Uh, the original risk of the trade could be removed and it could be a let it ride moment in case Tesla is within wave three of wave three because it could be going to 2000 in 2022 uh, right now the most important level to the downside is the 50 percent retracement which lines up with this wave one high of about 895 it wouldn't be the end of the world if tesla lost that level um, and i want to say right now that i've gone to exactly this pitchfork and really put in uh, the exact decimals of these uh, points so I think that any downside in Tesla would be contained by the lower bound of this pitchfork, but I don't think it's going to come to that. I do think we put in a wave four low. We're than a wave five higher right now. And once again, if Tesla did go below 895, bulls are so far in the driver's seat that we still kind of would be safely making the argument that Tesla's got an explosive more upside. We'd be calling this a one, two, uh, one, two Elliott wave nest. Now, I don't even think that's accurate. I think that this is kind of what's going to play out is that this is a huge wave three of wave three in progress on the smaller degree though that's kind of all we need is that this is uh wave one wave two wave three we ended wave four at the 38.2 percent retracement we're within a wave five higher right now and the writings on the wall that wave five will go much further than 1368 it could go as high as 1680 um, and at that point we would know that this is a one two we're within a wave three right now and that wave three target would be 1368 at minimum before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher and that's where we could see tesla go to potentially 2000 in 2022 a lot of upside for tesla a lot of upside for the clean energy sector in general here's the advanced market devices advanced market devices and tesla i wanted to include back to back because they both kind of show just how far in the driver's seat bulls are and when you're in the driver's seat right that's the benefit of kind of buying dips because a bull in the driver's seat or really anyone on any trade who's in the driver's seat can control whether or not it becomes a loser or a winner they can lock in profits they can raise their stop loss uh, they can hedge right so there's a lot of things that you can do when you're in the driver's seat and advanced market devices kind of shows how far in the driver's seat bulls are not only from here but from here we've been looking for explosive upside for amd and pretty conservatively from this low this is a wave one and a wave two and some kind of wave three may have ended at this high that we formed around 155 then we put in a wave four low and we're within a wave five higher right now the length of wave one placed with the wave four low you know should take amd to about 177. now what if amd went down okay what if amd went down kind of substantially then we would still be kind of making the argument that this is a wave one and a wave two and then this was just wave three we're still looking for a wave four to end between the 23.6 and 38.2 percent retracement we're still looking for a wave five higher that is at least the length of wave one place of the wave four low so bulls are in the driver's seat and we have a lot of evidence that this kind of uptrend in the medium term the bigger picture is going to contend uh going to continue and I think that this next kind of wave five point of interest for AMD is eventually going to be as high as 177. Not really the best entry right now, but I do think it's a little bit of evidence, you know, with Google, with Apple, that tech has more upside. Here is Micron. This is very pretty. It's a wave one and a wave two. It's a big wave one and a wave two that ends at the 50% retracement. The length of wave one placed at the wave two low should take Micron MU to 121. So this has been being accumulated by large institutions this entire time, right? So note that there's plenty of bearish sentiment for the past several months there have been plenty of bearish news headlines for the past several months but understand that large institutions didn't start buying uh, micron right here they were buying micron this entire time they were accumulating micron just like they were accumulating qualcomm and qualcomm has already proven that this is accumulation with that kind of substantial rally on huge volume to a new all-time high i think micron is next in the rotation uh, or at least next in line the length of wave one placed the wave too low says that 121 is a minimum wave three target and this is looking really good to be hit so micron going to 121 is looking great i can't wait to see it above this wave one high especially if it does it on higher than average volume it's going to confirm what we already know 
this is the left side of the base, this is the right side of the base, while they were giving us kind of gossip columns about the tenure yield and chip shortages and all this, large institutions were loading the boat. So Micron looks good. And when you predict, you know, Micron and Qualcomm, then what you do is you look at the stock that you haven't predicted or that you did predict but hasn't gone up yet. And that's Taiwan Semiconductors, TSM. This is a wave one and a wave two, a very nice wave three. And this is identical to Qualcomm, right? This is literally uh, indistinguishable from Qualcomm. It's the same story. Institutions have been loading up this entire time, just like Micron, in my opinion. We're going to hold above the 38.2% retracement of 104, and then the length of wave 3 plays at the wave 4 low. We'll take Taiwan Semiconductors 2, 208. This looks really good. A 1, 2, wave 3, that kind of sideways wave 4. The length of wave 3 plays at the wave 4 low, just as Micron going to 121 sounded crazy, just as Qualcomm going to 232 sounded crazy, just as AMD going to 136 sounded crazy, and just as NVIDIA going to 302 sounded crazy. Taiwan semiconductors going to 208 sounds crazy but really it's conservative so that looks good here is amazon amazon is a, a really pretty one i'll talk about the the short-term view right now i think this is a wave one and a wave two let me get the full kind of count i moved the numbers a little bit because this is the second take what i wanted to show is that um, on the larger degree there's a couple of ways to look at amazon but there's really only one debate so i always say remember the debate because a lot of traders they let the news headlines uh, cause them to forget the debate so there's only one debate okay and ha that's if large institutions have been accumulating amazon for the past 13 months or if they have been distributing amazon for the past 13 months right that's really the only debate uh that's really kind of the only position to take and if we look right now pretty conservatively um, this is a lot of upside for Amazon. So here's the most conservative view is that this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a wave three and this is a wave four. So Amazon is within a wave five higher right now. The length of wave three plays at the wave four low could take Amazon in the longer term cycles to 4,800. Now, this could actually be conservative. If Amazon goes past 4,800, what this most likely is, is a 1212 Elliott Wave Nest. So that's why I had these numbers moved to show that this is a 1212 Elliott Wave Nest potentially. And we're going to know this is the case if we go past, you know, 4,800 in the longer term cycles. But Amazon, kind of like Boeing, kind of like Disney, really supports the idea that, wait a minute, I thought the market was too frothy. It looks like Amazon hasn't done anything for the past 13 months. It also lines up with a lot of what we'll talk about later in this video of the e-commerce sector uh, doing quite well. This is a wave one and a wave two more aggressively. And another wave one and another wave two will be confirmed if Amazon goes past 4,800. So potentially a lot of upside for Amazon. So let's talk about the kind of shorter term view. I'll put these numbers where they belong. I want to give the, the, the bigger picture of Amazon. I think it's going to kind of follow Netflix, do the exact same thing, break out of a 13, 14 month base and, uh, you know, see it, see it fly. I think for right, for right now, this is Amazon in the short term. It's a wave one and a wave two. It's another wave one and another wave two. And now we're within wave three of wave three. The length of wave one places the wave two low gives a minimum wave three target of about uh, 4,000 ish but right now i think that this wave three in black is a really clean subdivision wave one of wave three wave two of wave three wave three of wave three wave four of wave three and wave five of wave three all in all i think this black wave three target will take amazon all the way to four thousand at least then we have a shallow wave four correction that will conservatively retest the wave one high then the length of wave one placed at the wave four low gives a wave five target for amazon of four thousand and four hundred so that kind of lines up you know especially if this ends up being a conservative wave three target and a conservative wave five target then amazon could see four thousand and eight hundred so i think it goes four thousand four thousand four hundred and then eventually four thousand eight hundred in that order it probably won't go there in a straight line but it's a lot of evidence that the stock market probably won't be crashing during that time and e-commerce might be doing quite well another big theme we see across the market here is xlv the healthcare etf this is probably the best chart in the market because we've already seen pfizer which is a huge holding of xlv a uh, break above this wave three high i think this is a wave one and a wave two this is a huge wave three that passed the 161.8 percent extension of wave one then we ended wave four between the 23.6 and the 38.2 percent retracement so it's pretty clear for bulls um if we want to see xlv above 123 to 124 if that happens we're probably reasonably going to expect we will make a new high we will follow pfizer for xlv and then the length of wave one plays at the wave four low we'll take xlv to 160 and if that's in four or five months well what's in four or five months that march quad witching date this could be a very clear wave one wave two wave three wave four wave five that ends at 160 
those five waves would in a large degree wave one then there would be an incredible buying opportunity for a wave two on a lot of dividend paying stocks in the healthcare sector in 2022 potentially so that's looking really good we'll talk about pfizer right now because that supports the idea that uh, one, we have a leading indicator. It also kind of shows what the worst case scenario for uh, Tesla would look like with the lower bound of the pitchfork. I said, you know, more recently in this video that Tesla going to the lower bound of the pitchfork would contain uh, any downside. I'll show why and, and kind of what that would look like with Pfizer. Here's the most conservative view. One, Pfizer is already above this high from August, right? So when we look at XLV and we're asking if that was the top, Pfizer really supports the idea that it wasn't. So the most conservative view for Pfizer is that this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a wave three that ended at the upper bound of the pitchfork and a wave four that ended at the lower bound. The length of wave one placed at the wave four low gives a minimum wave five target of 56. I think the length of wave three placed at the wave four low gives a more accurate target of 59. And the reason is that this probably isn't a a wave three or wave four at all it's most likely because we end at the 50 percent retracement a one two one two la wave nest and then that means the length of wave one place of the wave too low of 59 is just the minimum wave three target we'd have a shallow wave four correction and a wave five higher let's talk about the russell right now iwm IWM is kind of more of the evidence that we have that we will be entering a stock pickers market um, and we're, we'll see some names we haven't talked about in a long time outperform while people just look at you know certain stocks in the tech sector that have gone vertical as reasons that the market has to crash we look right now at IWM it says wait a minute a lot of stocks in this market haven't done anything um, for almost you know seven eight nine months this is a wave one and a wave two conservatively this is a wave three and a wave four I think that the classic traders who get rid of all this you know labeling and just call this a huge bull flag they'll say that this is the first leg of the bull flag placed at the low of the consolidation and that's how they'll get their target which will be much higher than what we're about to go over and i think they'll be correct but i want to be conservative uh, i think right now if we hold above an invalidation level of 195 and a stop level of 208 then iwm is within a wave five higher right now the length of wave one placed at the wave four low gives a minimum wave five target of 266 now i think that will be too conservative and we'll know that for a fact if we go past 266 i think the length of wave three placed at the wave four low is a more accurate and a more likely wave five target of 308 i could see that being hit you know certainly in the summer of 2022 even the first half of 2022 uh that this is a huge uh wave five in progress conservatively the length of wave three place of the wave four low gives a wave five target of 308 i want to see 208 hold with 195 and validating a wave four let's look at Trinseo corp Trinseo corp is in iwm it's a really pretty one it's a one two three four five a huge wave one and an abc correction that ends a nice wave two at the 50 percent retracement the length of wave one placed at the wave too low says Trinseo corp is going to 106 for a minimum wave three target remember the ceo of this company came out and quadrupled uh their dividend recently and really the reason that they gave was that you know they were rolling in dough so you know that's pretty good the length of wave one placed at the wave too low says you know they are rolling in dough and they are going to get to 106 for a minimum wave three target before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher tse is in the russell 2000 i want to see the 61.8 percent retracement of 37 hold as invalidation and the tight stop would be this low of 44 looks really good uh Trinseo corp more evidence that the russell 2000 will do great also the inflation play will do great when i say that disney and boeing are kind of you know no brainers like pfizer in the 30s i'm not saying that i'm going to be you know reckless and go all in these names what i'm saying is that in trading and investing it's important to acknowledge that losing trades and winning trades are part of the same process so just as important as having quality winners is making sure that you have quality losers when i look at disney and pfizer in the 30s and boeing right now in the 200s i see stocks that if i tell someone i'm investing in boeing if i tell someone i'm investing in disney they're not going to ask why right disney is basically a monopoly boeing is certainly a monopoly and disney is one of the most recognized brands in the world they're both value stocks and i think they're both really nice opportunities they're both really nice wave counts the point is if i'm going to have a loser in my portfolio i'd happily make it disney and boeing before say you know some of the other losers i've had in my portfolio but look right now at disney it's a clean count this is a one two three four five a big old wave one and an abc correction where the length of wave a placed at the wave b high is where wave c ended i don't believe this gap will get filled i think this will be an unfilled gap but if it does then that gap fill would be it we have an immediate reversal in my opinion but 
I don't think we'll get there. I think this will be an unfilled gap. This is a wave one, two, three, four, five, huge wave one. If you change the subdivision, it wouldn't change a thing. We'd still be looking for a huge wave two to end. But anyway, uh, some people like to, you know, oh, that's subdivided, that's subdivided incorrectly. Um, it could certainly be a one, two, three, four, five. Doesn't really matter about the subdivision. What's important is that this is a huge wave one. This is an ABC correction that ends at the length of wave A, place of the wave B high, you know, and this, this is kind of one where sometimes it's not about the trades I make. It's about the trades I don't. The length of wave one, place of the wave too low, says I better wake up in 2022, 2023 with a good reason that I didn't buy Disney because it's going to 274 for a minimum wave three target before a shallow wave four, uh, the retest the wave one high, then the length of wave one, place of the wave four low, gives a kind of wave five minimum target of 328. All in all, you know, that's pretty conservative. 141 is a nice risk management level, uh, but it's far from invalidation. If Disney went lower than 141, at this point, I would still welcome that. Here is Boeing. We'll talk about the airline ETF jets first because it gives really nice kind of downside levels and a really nice view of the airline kind of reopening travel stock, you know, thing in general. But this is a wave one and a wave two. Conservatively, this is a wave three and a wave four. I think this is too conservative uh, because we end at the 50 to 61.8% retracement. We're seeing right now that this airline sector, you know, Boeing, a lot of the reopening stocks, they're looking for kind of explosive moves. Before we were looking for kind of wimpy, you know, marginal new highs. I think right now with these deeper corrections, it's supporting the idea that we're looking for a much larger rally. This is a wave one and a wave two. Conservatively, this is a wave three and a wave four. The length of wave one places the wave four low and the length of wave three places the wave four low. Give a wave five target zone between 31 and 34. Uh, I think that that's going to end up being too conservative. I think the more accurate count for Jets, the airline ETF, is that this is another wave one and another wave two. Then the length of wave one in blue placed at the wave two low still says 34 is an important target. It's just the minimum wave three target will have a shallow wave four correction and a wave five higher. So this could be, you know, the opportunity for the airline sector. You know, Boeing certainly supports this idea, but I want to include jets because it gives, you know, really nice downside levels. 20 being a very tight stop, 18 to 78.6% fib. That's a nice, you know, invalidation level to stay above. Here is Boeing. Boeing, BA, right? If I tell someone I'm buying Boeing, they're not going to ask me why. You know, don't be a robot, um, you know, but this is Boeing. It looks like a wave one and a wave two. It looks like a big wave three is in progress. And this is wave one of wave three and wave two of wave three that ended at 191. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if Boeing broke below 191, but it wouldn't validate the idea that this is a wave one and a wave two. I think this is a big wave three in progress. If we're above 191, the next target pretty safely is 307 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. Then the length of wave one places the wave four low, you know, takes Boeing to 365 for this black wave three target. So wave one, wave two, uh, wave three is in progress to 365. If we're above uh, 191, then this is another wave one and another wave two. This is a huge nest. It could get very explosive for Boeing. It could get very explosive for the airline sector uh, and, and really a lot of the aerospace stocks in general. Here is Alibaba. Alibaba, um, I'm going to show two counts of Alibaba. The first is that uh, what's going to happen if we don't break below this low. So if we don't break below this low of about 129, then I think the best way to count Alibaba is that this is a wave one and a wave two, and that this is another wave one and another wave two. The length of wave one placed with the wave two low will take Alibaba to a new all-time high for a, a really a silly wave three target. Then we have a shallow wave four correction that conservatively retests the wave one high. Then the length of wave one placed at the wave four low will take Alibaba all the way to the 500s. And that would just complete a large degree wave three. Let's talk about what would happen if Alibaba did break below 129. It really wouldn't change much, to be honest. Um, I would just be saying that this is all a huge wave one from the all-time low, and then we're ending wave two still between the 61.8 and the 78.6% fib. So if we're above 110. That would be a wider invalidation. So I'm in Alibaba for the long haul, and I think that there's uh, really holistic evidence. We talk about net ease a lot. We talk about the Chinese EV names a lot, but I think that Chinese internet is going to be an important growth sector for me personally to be uh, exposed to. The market rotates, and you know I think that. If if there were, you know, a multi-year rally, a multi-month rally uh, in the Chinese growth sector, it would hog a lot of money from the rest of the market. So this could be a very important sector to be exposed to. And there's a lot of holistic evidence, right? If it were just Alibaba, I wouldn't really be talking about it, but it's Wayfair, it's NetEase, right? It's even, you know, 
stocks like XPEV and Li Auto and, and Neo that show that Chinese growth, Chinese internet is a sector uh, that I personally want to be exposed to for a very long time. And even if we did break below, you know, 129, we'd still be looking for the 61.8 to 78.6% FIB to hold. I also want to show with Alibaba, first ever, first ever cloud bounce off the Ichimoku cloud. If this is a successful Ichimoku cloud breakout on the monthly chart, this could be a, a very long-term uptrend that begins, right? If we see Alibaba above this, you know, monthly Ichimoku cloud and it starts heading to this new all-time high, then it's not going to be one uh, for me personally to sell when this high of 319 is broken at all. This is going to be potentially, potentially Amazon in 2009. I really think that. So here is Wayfair. Wayfair supports the idea that Chinese e-commerce is a very important sector to be exposed to. We'll talk about a few scenarios for Wayfair right now. And it really supports the idea with Alibaba that even if we make, you know, a new low, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I don't think we'll make a new low though. I think right now, the most conservative view of Wayfair is that this is a wave one and a wave two. Notice how this wave two was very scary before an explosive rally, right? That's kind of gonna be a theme that you notice, especially as a wave theorist, is that the best opportunities are kind of preceded by the scariest dips. Uh, shout out to the software sector right now. But this is a wave one and a wave two, a huge wave three. And conservatively, this is a wave four that ended at the 38.2% FIB. This is wave one away five and wave two away five. Waves three, four, and five away five will be quite explosive. The minimum wave five target is the length of wave three placed at the wave four low. Even if we don't make a new low, this could still be conservative, right? This could very well be a one, two, one, two Elliott wave nest, right? And Wayfair is one that I want to include um, first off, let me say that I made all the charts for this video and got them ready before today's price action. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm reacting to some of the software stocks being up today. I made all these charts and got them ready last night. Um, but if we look at Wayfair right now, even if we went to the 50% FIB of about 185, it would still be an explosive opportunity for the Chinese e-commerce kind of sector, right? This would just be a, another wave one and then another wave two that's, that's retesting the wave one high. It would still be an explosive LA wave nest. I think Wayfair is going to the 500s, you know, even close to 700 in the longer term cycles. 185 is a nice invalidation level. I know that seems wide. Um, this low of 221 is a nice risk management level. So Wayfair looks good. So does NetEase. And if Wayfair and NetEase are in big rallies, and even if the, the CEO of Alibaba is never found, um, we're still going to see probably Alibaba rally with the sector. This is a wave one and a wave two for XPEV. And XPEV is in the Chinese growth sector. It's a lot of evidence holistically that Neo and Li Auto are going to be uh, very good. Let's just talk about what could happen. If XPEV is ever above this high, then this is an IPO base. And that's very important because XPEV is so early in its life cycle that there's a reason we focus on some of these IPO stocks like Palantir, you know, like Fastly. It's because when a stock is very early in its life cycle, there really is kind of no minimum price target for what could happen if the wave one high is broken. And I think this is an IPO base for XPEV. And more importantly, I think we have a lot of evidence that we're going to break above this wave one high. If we look at this cycle right now for XPEV, this is a wave one and an ABC wave two that ends at the 50% retracement. The wave three kind of textbook target is the 161.8% extension of 63 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. All in all, pretty conservatively, I mean, they just reported a beautiful blowout. This is looking great. A one, two, wave three to 63 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher says XPEV will make a new all-time high. It will confirm this is an IPO base and large institutions have been loading up XPEV for the past year. And we don't really know why, because it's so early in its life cycle that any target that I give is going to be silly, right? And that's the, the possible, you know, the possible magic potentially of growth investing when you find a stock and, and catch one before it breaks to a new high out of the IPO base. It could be a Square Cash, potentially a Netflix, potentially a, you know, Roku opportunity for these huge, you know, multi-year runs that we've seen recently. I think the eCash stocks like PayPal and Square Cash are the most recent example of what can happen when an IPO base is broken. I think XPEV quite certainly will break this wave one high and show large institutions have been loading it up and Lee Auto and likely uh, Neo as well for the past year. It looks really good. Here's Lee Auto. If we look at the XPEV chart and the Lee Auto chart, you really can't tell a difference except that XPEV is already above this wave one high, and it looks like it's also going to go break above this, you know, big time high. So let's look at the 
you know, to your chart, it's the exact same thing. If Lee Auto is above this wave one high, then we know potentially that at least I caught a monster, right? This could be a massive IPO base on a stock that is very early in its life cycle. The short term count kind of supports that idea. This is a wave one and an ABC wave two that ended at the 50% fib. We've already seen XPEV, you know, really have an explosive breakout above this high. You know, Lee Auto and Tesla look like they've got more upside. I think that this is, you know, going to play out. We're even just in the, the short-term cycle, we're within wave one, wave two, the wave three target is 49. That's a new all-time high that would confirm an IPO-based breakout. And then really, you know, I don't want to be, you know, reckless or anything, but that's kind of use your imagination territory. If we break above the wave one high, uh, we're going to get into some potentially explosive price targets right now. I think if we connect the beginning of this wave one with the high of wave one and the, the low of wave two, XPEV and Lee Auto will run until Lee Auto reaches the median of the Andrews Pitts fork for this black wave three target. So looks very good for Lee Auto. Here is Neo. Neo is um, a big holding of the KARS ETF with Tesla. So there's a lot of evidence that these two are correlated. Um, this is an ABC correction. This is a wave one and an ABC correction wave two. We just talked about how Chinese uh, Chinese EV stocks like XPEV and Lee Auto could be getting ready for multi-year rallies. Does that guarantee anything about NEO? No, uh, but it says that if NEO is above 33, it could be a lot of upside. If NEO goes and breaks above this high from January, it's going to confirm that there is, you know, a lot of institutional accumulation that has been going on in NEO for almost a year. And this is a wave one and a wave two. So if we're above 33, then the wave three target is the 161.8% extension of wave one. That's 70 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. And then that would confirm that this is, this is all a huge base. This would look really good. I expect that while uh, XPEV is going to the 60s and then eventually the 80s and Lee Auto is going into the, the upper 40s, that NEO will be rallying. And I think the, the next time we see Tesla take a substantial leg higher, I think that NEO will actually be joining it and potentially outperforming it. So there's a lot of upside for NEO. There's no guarantees, but if it's above 33, this could be you know a great opportunity. Just the wave one, wave two, wave three would take it to 70 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. NEO looks really good. If it's above 33, you know, it's kind of use your imagination here's the solar etf tan we talk about it a lot but i want to include it just because it's kind of holistic evidence that the clean energy sector has more upside it holds first solar and its largest holding in phase energy has blown past the first quarter high right explosively and we talked about aces an etf that holds tesla first solar in phase energy and next air energy that looks identical to this and all four of those stocks i just listed have broken above the first quarter high there is so much evidence that the solar etf tan will break um, this high of 125 and even within the short term view i think this is a wave one and a wave two a wave three is in progress to 109 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher here are the wave four fibs um, we're kind of getting off the chart right now but that wave four kind of retracement zone would be around 101 but all in all, uh, the length of wave one placed at the wave four low can take uh, certainly the solar ETF tan to a new all time high. Confirm, just like we talked about with NEO, that this is all a year of institutional accumulation on the clean energy sector. And the more that we kind of nail with these, the more that we're probably right about this sector. We've seen in phase energy explode, we've seen first solar explode. Does that guarantee anything? No, but it's a lot of evidence that uh, the solar ETF tan will go break above this high of 125 in the, the, the short term count. Shows a pretty clear path how we're going to get there. The 161.8% extension of um, 109 is a pretty conservative wave three target. We'd have a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. And then that would be that new all-time high between 125 and 130. So it's looking good. Here's Polar Power. Polar Power is kind of a small cap name. It's, it's very risky. Um, this is a one, two, three, four, five, a huge wave one. And ABC correction is a nice wave two right at the 78.6% fib. You know, I love for kind of some of these riskier growth stocks. I look for the wave one high on the smaller degree to get retested. That's about 4.96. That's a nice level to stay above. But realistically, um, I think position sizing would be the best uh, risk management practice with polar power that's the one that i took i actually took a half position in polar power uh, at nine so um, i'm still holding it this is a wave one and a wave two the, le the length of wave one places wave two low says that the minimum wa minimum wave three target is 34 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher uh, the length of wave one placed at the wave four low could take polar power to yeah i'm not going to say that but you get the point polar power has potentially you know a lot of upside it's a growth stock um and the biggest moves to the upside are 
usually followed by the scariest shakeouts. This is an ABC correction, but it very likely is a massive base. Large institutional accumulation, and this could be getting ready to fly. The length of wave one places the wave too low, says that polar power could go to 34 for a conservative wave three target. And that doesn't sound conservative, but uh, that's growth stocks. Here is Workhorse. Workhorse is another one where, you know, when we see Tesla, we see Neo, we see XPEV and Lee Auto break out, we see plug power start to move. It makes you look at some of these kind of riskier, smaller cap names, you know, and maybe give them the benefit of the doubt. This is a one, two, three, four, five big wave one for Workhorse. I mean, that's pretty clearly a one, two, three, four, five waves impulse. Now, an ABC correction, Workhorse has a ridiculous short float it's got pretty low implied volatility and is at the 78.6 percent fib it's retesting this lower uh wave one high on the smaller degree that's about 5.37 that's pretty tight you know um and really it's another one where position size is kind of the only risk management because the there's not really a invalidation level you know below or above a dollar but right now workhorse wave one abc wave two this could be a huge base right just like plug power just like you know, a lot of these stocks that everyone thinks it's crazy that, you know, they could be putting in a massive wave too low. I think that's most likely uh, the case. This is a wave one and a wave two. And I think the next time that Tesla rallies, it's going to take um, a lot of these small cap EV names with, with it. The length of wave one places the wave too low. It says workhorse going to 48 in the long term cycles is a conservative wave three target. Okay. The length of wave three places the wave four low. I mean, I can't say the wave five target, but man i mean there's a lot of upside for workhorse right now high beta stocks higher risk high reward it's another one where it's early in its life cycle if we're ever above this wave one high it will confirm that this is institutional accumulation that's been going on for a very long time they want all that supply uh, for a multi-year rally in my opinion workhorse looks good here is paypal paypal shows kind of two scenarios i think twlo you know is really the best view of a lot of these kind of software kathy wood names there's two views of paypal right now i think both of them are really extremely bullish this is a wave one and a wave two so if we're above 171 then the preferred count is that this is another wave one and another wave two the length of wave one places the wave too low says this is an explosive nest and this is actually very similar to what twlo is doing right now then the length of wave one places the wave too low could take paypal to a new all-time high for a minimum wave three target we'd have a shallow wave four that retests the wave one high then the length of wave one places places the wave four low says that paypal could be going to the 450s i want to see 169 hold uh, but i'll show what the count would be if it if it broke it's kind of very similar to alibaba where it wouldn't be the end of the world I do think that this is pretty clearly uh, an impulse structure, right? I think it's pretty hard to debate that. I predicted that this kind of bull flag structure would, would play out right around a year ago. You know, for those of you who believe in seasonality, it also kind of looks like Bitcoin. And a lot of the, the cryptos are going to be rallying very similar to November of 2020. But I just want to show right now uh, what, it, what it would be. I mean, if this is, you know, if we do go below 171, it's not the end of the world for PayPal. In my opinion, what it would look like is that this is a wave one and a wave two on the larger degree. And this is another wave one and an ABC correction ending another wave two. If there's any good news about PayPal and Roku is that there's really no way to call this a wave four correction. If these are corrective waves, then they are wave two corrections. And what follows is going to be ridiculous the this is most likely if we did break below 171 a huge wave one a huge wave two another wave one and another wave two now the 61.8 percent retracement of 169 lines up with 171 that's a level that to be honest i want to trade above because the 78.6 percent fib is too far down to the downside right that would be 130 that's pretty damn wide you know you don't want to be that guy who you know just you know catches the falling knife so to speak but i think this is not a falling knife i think it's a huge opportunity a huge wave one and wave two on the larger degree another wave one and another wave two you know it lines up with most of the software sector of an explosive nest potentially under underway right now that 61.8 percent fib of 100 169 lines up with this low of 171 that's a pretty good level to trade above and there's a, a lot of upside for paypal I even think 450 in the longer term cycles will end up being conservative. Roku is the exact same thing. You know, when there's blood in the streets, even if it's your own blood, uh, Baron Rothschild said to buy it. Uh, I'm not saying to buy it, but this is a one, two, three, four, five, huge wave one, a clear five waves impulse. And yeah, I did kind of predict that Roku was going to explode from this level. Does that mean I'm right about ex Roku exploding from this level? No, 
Um, but it's just something to think about. This is a one, two, three, four, five, a huge wave one, an ABC correction ending a huge wave two. The length of wave A placed at the wave B high. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this with Zoom in a little bit, but the length of wave A placed at the wave B high is where wave C is ending. Then the length of wave one placed at the wave too low should take Roku to 684. Is there any good news about Roku breaking below this low of 272? There actually is, and that's that we were calling this a wave four low before. There's no way we can call this corrective wave a wave four. That means the length of wave one placed at the wave too low gives a target of 684, for a wave three target, and that's the minimum wave three target, we'd have a shallow wave four that retests the wave one high, then the length of wave one placed at the wave four low could take Roku to the 950 range. So it's not, you know, out of the question that Roku in the longer term cycles is heading to the thousands. I think Roku and Zoom is gonna be one where people hear, you know, the price target's a thousand, they're gonna say I'm too bullish, and then there will be a stock split, right? Everyone said Nvidia going to a thousand was crazy, then there was a stock split, and then, you know, all of a sudden a thousand was just 300. So this is a huge wave one and a wave two, in my opinion. The 61.8% FIB of 202, just like PayPal is a nice level to trade above, it's not exactly the invalidation, but the 78.6% FIB is a little wide, right? Um, 124, that really can't be the stop. The next one would be this wave one high on the smaller degree of 176. So I guess 176 to 202, that's a level to trade above. I think that the entire software sector, right? In the same way that NetEase, Wayfair, and even all the Chinese EV stocks are good evidence that Alibaba will eventually bottom. I think the fact that all of these software stocks are kind of all together, you know, forming these really explosive moves are kind of holistic evidence that this is capitulation. We'll talk about TWLO next, but, you know, Roku right now, if it's above 202 with 173 being a wider invalidation, but really 200, the length of wave one places the wave too low, says that we could be seeing an explosive long-term rally to, you know, close to 700 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. That means that 950 is certainly on the table. Here's TWLO. This is the prettiest picture of the software sector, realistically, and I think that this is, a lot of really good evidence we're not going to include Okta in this video we will probably in the next one but i think this is a wave one and a wave two and it's very similar to Okta. it's very similar to psj where it's just kind of a sideways kind of bull flag you know just kind of hey why don't you go chase all those other stocks uh don't look at you know any of the software stocks that are at the 61.8 to 78.6 percent fib just like paypal um, I predicted that this was a wave one and a wave two, and that the length of this rally placed at this low would take TWLO to an equal X target that did get reached. I think this is a wave one and a wave two. I don't believe uh, that TWLO will go below 216. So I really don't think that TWLO will go below 216. And yes, I could be completely wrong about that, but I don't think so. I think this is a wave one and an ABC correction that's ending wave two between the 61.8 and the 78.6% FIB, we're gonna hold about 216, and this is getting ready to fly. This is a wave one and a wave two. That means if this is another wave one and another wave two, the minimum silly wave three target is 500 before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher, then the length of wave, uh, the length of wave one placed at the wave four low, if wave four retests the wave one high, should take TWLO to 700 in the longer term cycles. I think 500 uh, gets hit pretty conservatively by Q2, possibly even Q1. But I think this is a, a beautiful template for software. If we're above 216, you know, TWLO, especially if we continue to form this wick and reverse right here, is going to be a very, you know, big piece of evidence that this is a big base. You know, this is a huge base for not just TWLO, but a lot of software stocks. And, you know, that's a big deal. When we look at Zoom right now, right, I thought Zoom was the future. Everyone said Zoom is going to take over the world. Then all of a sudden it's trading at a discount. Um, and it's not so, uh, it's not so great anymore, but the chart says that this is an incredible opportunity. It really does. This is a one, two, three, four, five, a big wave one. Now an ABC correction where the length of wave A places the wave B high is where wave C is ending between the 61.8 and 78.6% FIB. Now I can't tell my utilities provider about wave two lows, right? Um, I can't tell my broker about wave two lows. I can't tell, you know, I can't tell anyone who I really, you know, kind of report to about wave two lows, but this is a wave two low. In my opinion, the length of wave one places the wave two low says that zoom is going to the 700s for a wave three target. Then there will be a shallow wave four correction and a wave five higher conservatively wave four will retest the wave one high. And just like I said, NVIDIA going to the, the, the 1,000 range was crazy. Uh, then there was a stock split, and then 1,000 turned into 300. This could be the very same thing where 
this one, two, three, four, five waves impulse taking zoom to 1100 in the long term cycles seems crazy, uh, but it's really not. And right now, if you look at Zoom, if you look at Roku 2, very first time ever in their chart history that the weekly RSI has hit oversold. You know, that's kind of something to think about. One, two, three, four, five, big wave one, right? And we just talked about TWLO giving evidence that this is all the past year has been accumulation in the software sector. And I know that's hard to fathom, right? How could an institution be buying Zoom and Alibaba while the price goes down? Because they want the supply, right? They want to scare you out. This is a big wave one and an ABC correction ending a big wave two. Right now, that 78.6% fib of 173 is kind of the only, you know, reasonable and validation level. This wave one high on the smaller degree is 101. That's probably way too wide. I think the length of wave one places the way too low. Says Zoom is going to turn around. It's going to head into the 700s in the longer term cycles. This whole rally takes a year. So this wave three rally uh, could take, you know, a little bit of time. But remember, wave three in Elliott Wave Theory is stronger and faster than wave one. So that means that 724 is actually a pretty conservative wave three target. We'd have a shallow wave four that retests the wave one high. Then the length of wave one places the wave four low. You know, it says Zoom could quadruple. It could quintuple in the longer term cycles. Probably will have a stock split along the way. Um, but usually it's better to to buy in the bottom of the base than you know chase it at the cup and handle for me personally zoom looks very good here's fastly it's another one right we said it was going to take over the world it was going to take over the world during wave one and now it was a scam at the 61.8 to 78.6 percent fib isn't that funny how it works uh but this is a one two three four five big wave one an abc correction any wave two i still want to see 33 hold 33 uh, lines up with this wave one high of 35 on the smaller degree it's also the 78.6% fib. So 35 to 37, there has to be a risk management level. The length of wave one places the wave too low. Says Fastly could be getting ready to fly all the way to 159. It's a gross stock. It's quite risky. But again, we have this holistic evidence, right? It's not just Zoom. It's not just Fastly. It's not just Roku. It's not just PayPal. It's the idea that all of these kind of software stocks are kind of showing that this could be an explosive rally. That doesn't guarantee anything, but it's a lot of evidence. The length of wave one placed at the wave too low. Says a lot of these software names are going to rip. And one thing that I will say is that kind of since we had that big sell-off in the first or second quarter in software we've seen a lot of software names a lot of individual names have explosive breakouts to name a few datadog and cloudflare uh, were two that i talked about especially cloudflare before it happened and you know that's kind of evidence that wait a minute those might just be the leaders and now we look at the laggards right you know, I think Fastly, I think Zoom, I think Roku, I think that they're the laggards in the software sector, and that's not going to be uh, the case for much longer. Fastly, I think, will hold above 33, and then it's it's really kind of a use your imagination uh, price target if it doesn't. Here is Palantir. Palantir is another one. It's a wave one. It looks like a wave two, ending between the 61.8 to 78.6% fib. So this wave too low is about 17.05. The 78.6% fib is 16.63. So that kind of has a lot of confluence. There has to be a risk management level. And I think right now, most likely, this is a wave one and a wave two. I think this is another wave one and another wave two. I think we're going to hold above 17. And then we're going to begin wave three of wave three. If this is the left side of the base and Palantir does what Unity Software did, there's no price target for how high Palantir can go if this is an IPO base, right? Above 16.05, above 17.05 to 16.63, that's the risk, right? Palantir can certainly go below that. Large institutions have been loading up options on Palantir for the past couple of months. They could definitely be anticipating a move that sends Palantir to five. I don't think they are. I think that they're anticipating that Palantir will turn around and begin wave three of wave three, it's gonna go challenge this wave one high. It's going to follow Unity Software in the IPO ETF, and it's going to form the left side of the base, the right side of the base, and then everyone is gonna be chasing Pounder in the 50s, okay? That's most likely what's gonna happen. I think Pounder looks beautiful right here. It's another one, right? I thought it was gonna take over the world, but then it started trading at a discount, and all of a sudden it's a scam. Hmm. Uh, remember, the best ones are called scams that are overvalued uh, all the way up to the top. Uh, here is Bitcoin. This is the most conservative view of Bitcoin. It's a wave one and an ABC wave two, a big, and I honestly think this is conservative. I don't even think this is accurate, but I'll share it because it's conservative. This is a wave three that passes the 161.8% extension of wave one. I'm pretty sure Bitcoin might have bottomed at the exact time I saw a couple of expanded flat counts on Finchwit. 
But I think the length of wave one plays with wave four low says conservatively, Bitcoin's going to 7, uh, 79,314. Now, for a wave four invalidation, uh, the 50 you know, percent, the 61.8 percent retracement of 50k lines up with that wave one high. That looks good, but that's not really that important of an invalidation because I think what most likely is going on is that that's not a wave three, that's not a wave four. This is another wave one and another wave two. The reason that I show kind of the more conservative count first is to really give the, the evidence, but I think that this is a wave three of wave three that's going to occur. I think the length of wave one places the wave too low is too conservative i don't think bitcoin is going to stop at seventy nine thousand. here's what i actually think is going to happen i think this is another wave one and another wave two from this wave two low so the length of wave one placed at the wave two low takes bitcoin past seventy nine thousand. so if bitcoin goes past seventy nine thousand. if it goes past eighty thousand, then this more aggressive view will be confirmed and this is really the one that lines up with the rest of the cryptocurrencies like ripple and litecoin and ethereum but if we in riot blockchain and you know just start naming them but this is a wave one and a wave two the length of wave one places the wave too low takes bitcoin to 80 000, if we go past 80 000 to eighty three thousand, then that most likely will confirm that this is a wave one and a wave two we're in wave three of wave three right now so the 50 percent retracement to the 61.8 percent retracement is about 50k that's a nice stop level i think you know a better invalidation level would be 45,000 for a more aggressive nest view then the length of wave one places the wave too low says that 80 to 83,000 is too conservative it would be followed by a shallow wave four cor uh, correction that conservatively retests the wave one high then the length of wave one placed at the wave uh four low I mean, that's how we see right now, right in front of us, Bitcoin's path to the 90,000 range, okay? It's right in front of you, one, two, one, two, Elliott Wave Nest, wave three of wave three says, we're all gonna be watching TikTok videos of you know people buying Bitcoin on margin when it's close to 100K, most likely in Q1. Here is Cardano, the most staked cryptocurrency in the world. Um, I don't think that a cryptocurrency is how I would look for passive income, but this is a one, two, three, four, five, a huge wave one. ABC correction ends wave two for Cardano between the 61.8 and 78.6% FIB. I want to include Cardano and kind of mix it up. We talk about Ripple, we talk about Litecoin a lot. A lot of times when I diversify, I don't just want to diversify in um, you know, the the asset class. I also want to diversify on, you know, where in the chart, you know, is this stock. And really at Cardano, it's really been a leader, right? So Ripple and Litecoin, they're kind of the laggard play. I think Cardano is kind of the one that's already in the, the established uptrend. It looks really pretty right here. This is a one, two, three, four, five, wave one, ABC correction ends wave two. You know, I wouldn't stake a cryptocurrency uh, for passive income. That's obviously my unprofessional opinion. But I think a, a nice stop would be 1.45. That's pretty tight. The real invalidation that matters is a dollar, basically a dollar even. And if Cardano is above these levels, this is a one, two, three, four, five, wave one, a wave two um, that ended between the 61.8 and 78.6% FIB. So wave three, the minimum wave three target is 3.69. We'd have a shallow wave four correction that conservatively retest the uh, wave four high, then the length of wave one, placed at the wave four low, says Cardano can go all the way to five. It can triple, it can qu quadruple from the uh, current levels. So it's unlikely that the stock market will crash during that time. And um, with that, I want to say happy Thanksgiving. I hope everyone has, you know, a really safe holiday weekend. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video.